Hello, this is Sandeep. In Azure Machine Learning Studio, uh, there are multiple regression algorithms available. The easiest uh, to understand and implement is the linear regression. So if I drag linear regression uh, to the canvas, and if you look at on the right hand side over here, you'll see the second parameter that you can set is L2 regularization weight. And I want to explain what this um, L2 parameter does and how it can help you uh, create better models and what are uh, some of the uh, drawbacks and advantages of uh, using it. Uh, so to start off uh, linear regression, um, it's very easy to understand. So if we have a bunch of uh, numerical variables that are available and we want to predict um, X, uh, but we want to predict Y using those X, uh, what we do is um, just find the error. So this E over here is uh, the error term. Sum all of those errors. Um, so all these squares represent summing of all of those squares. So we get rid of all the negative values and we can sum all of them together. Um, and essentially we find a weight uh, or find a line such that sum of all these squares um, is uh, minimized. And the goal here really is to find uh, the weights that are assigned to each of these variables. So you can think of linear regression as just the weighted sum of all the features, all the features, all the columns that you have in your data, um, and then find the weights that we can attach uh, to each of these variables so that uh, the error is minimized. So that's what the linear regression does. Now, linear regression in general is very easy to interpret and uh, set up, but there are some uh, limitations. The, the, one of the biggest ones is that um, the, all these variables, these x1 and x2s, these variables, these need to be uncorrelated with each other. Um, you cannot have a, a multicollinearity uh, um, among them because if that happens, uh, results become less interpretable. Um, your accuracy might suffer as well. One downside of that um, is when you have multicollinearity, these weights start inflating. Um, so these W1 and W2, all these weights start becoming um, very high. Um, and that happens either because you have multicollinearity or because you have high model complexity. High model complexity is obviously not an issue if you're just using the linear terms, but when you start adding um, the polynomial versions of these, so if you were to include uh, x2 square and x3 square and add them up, even though you are just squaring those variables, it's you're still adding them up. So it still is a linear model, um, but you're just um, squaring them to capture the nonlinearities. In those, as you increase the, the model complexity, these weights start to become very high or very large. And to get around that uh, issue um, and to make the, the, the drawback of high model complexity is that the models don't generalize very well. Um, so to get around that, we use penalized version of uh, regular, uh, regression, linear regression. So what the penalized version of regression, in a nutshell, what it does, what we do is we take the, the, as I mentioned earlier, the goal here really is to minimize the sum of squares. So we take the sum of squares, um, but we create a new loss function such that in addition to that sum of squared, we add a penalty term and then multiply that the model complexity. And the way we um, measure model complexity is uh, either by adding these weights together or squaring these weights and then adding them together. If we just take the weights and sum them up, um, taking absolute values and sum them up, it, it's called L1 penalty or lasso regression. And if we scale, square them and then add them up, uh, it, it's, a, it's called ridge regression, which is what I'm going to talk about. And then we multiply that by a penalty, um, and that penalty would be, uh, it's called lambda or sometimes an alpha value. And the effect of doing that is, let's say your penalty is zero, um, then this model complexity is not there, and you just have SSC. So that because essentially becomes your uh, linear regression. But as this penalty value um, increases, 
because we have to minimize this total loss function, this SSC plus the second term, because we have to minimize the whole thing, in proportion, the weights have to go down um, to minimize the overall loss function. So which is what is shown in this uh, graph over here. As your penalty starts increasing, um, we sacrifice uh, some of that bias, um, make the model more flexible, um, and we uh, start reducing the RSME. Now, if we keep increasing the, uh, the penalty value, uh, the RSME goes down and then we have bias variance trade-off and then at certain point we stop uh, reducing the RSME and then it will keep going up again. Now this will happen on the test set, on the, uh, uh, um, on the training set, um, in general the RSME will uh, go down. So I just wanted to uh, cover that and I wanted to show you how you can use uh, this penalized version of linear regression in Azure Machine Learning Studio. So before I do that, let me just uh, first talk about the data that I'm going to use. So this is a data of uh, baseball uh, players, baseball hitters, and we have names of all the different players and their statistics. Um, and, and the goal is to predict their salary. Um, so this salary column over here uh, based on their uh, statistics. And this is a really good uh, example, and I wanted to use this because if we look at uh, the correlation plot over here, um, right at the bottom is uh, the salary. And if you see, um, we have a moderate relationship, um, 0.3 to 0.5 uh, positive relation, correlationship with all the variables. But then we have lots and lots of variables that, are, that have high collinearity uh, with each other. Uh, typically, what we would uh, in production, if we were to encounter this, we would do more analysis, get rid of some of the factors here, um, and then do PCA and a bunch of other things. Uh, but just for the sake of um, uh, demonstration here, I'm going to keep all these variables here. So the pipeline here, uh, in my case, is uh, what we are going to attempt to do here is create, add this penalty, um, and then see if by doing that, we can deal with uh, the collinear factors. Um, and let's see how we can do that. So the pipeline here is really easy. Uh, we have uh, all the categorical columns. Um, those have to be one hot encoded, uh, meaning we have to convert all the categoricals to numbers. Um, and the numericals have to be scaled. Uh, in this case, I'm just using the standard scalar, so uh, we have unit va unit variance. Uh, now, it, this becomes especially more important. So in linear regression or linear analysis, uh, we have to do these steps, but this is even more important in case of uh, using regularized uh, regression. And that's because we are assessing the weights um, or minimizing the weights on these, uh, um, on, for these terms. So they have to be scale independent, um, otherwise we'll get uh, different results. So we uh, scale all the numerical variables um, and then I just run it through a regression. And just for comparison purposes, I'm gonna use linear regression, scikit-learn. So linear regression, lasso, uh, ridge regression, decision tree, and random forest. And so uh, if you look at the, um, the, the ridge uh, regression, um, that I've instantiated over here, uh, ridge is alpha is equal to 402. So this alpha value is nothing but uh, this penalty. And as we start increasing the penalty, uh, we start reducing the RSME. Um, I have not shown it over here, but I ran cross-validation and tuned that hyperparameter uh, to see where I get the most optimal value for RSME. Um, and that was uh, 402 uh, in my case, uh, in scikit learn. And I did that, um, and if we look at the results, uh, for OLS, uh, just using, uh, without using any penalty, uh, my RSME on the training set was 300, and that increased to 388. So we are definitely overfitting. With rich regression, however, we are increasing uh, the because we are sacrificing some of that bias, 
uh, we are increasing um, our RSME on the trend set, but then at the same time, the the test set RSME has go, RMSC has gone gone down from 388 to 327. Not a huge drop, uh, but that does show that when you have linear uh, uh, variables that are uh, collinear with each other, ridge regression can uh, help us uh, dealing with those. Lasso regression, um, we, use, we use different penalty for that, but um, and I tuned those parameters too, uh, but drop from 388 to 345, so we do get uh, better results on uh, the test set as well, not as much as ridge, and then in comparison, uh, this is interesting because in comparison, um, both decision tree and random forest without tuning any parameters, we drop from 388 to uh, 248 and then um, 388. And th that does show that um, these two, these tree based methods, um, they deal with uh, multicollinear features really well. We don't even have to do anything. So, so I did that. Now, typically, when you tune these parameters, you always do that uh, in a CV to make sure uh, your hyperparameters are robust and you can generalize them. If we look at the coefficients now, so again, um, coefficients are these weights. Um, so W1 times X1, so W1 is the coefficient. If we extract the coefficients from scikit-learn, um, you will see that you'll see that, uh, let's see over here. So your oranges, these orange lines are all linear regression and the greens are uh, ridge regression. So in all the cases, almost all the cases, um, the orange line has gone down. Uh, the, the, the green line is significantly smaller than uh, the orange line. In some cases it has uh, the green lines or the green bars have uh, changed the sign as well which is interesting. So that's the effect of using that penalty term. What we are trying to do is we are trying to reduce the weight um, on all of these uh, uh, variables um, and then do that. Now the effect of lasso regression is if we look at the coefficients of the lasso regression, we are not only shrinking. Um, so in case of ridge regression, for example, from 219, gone down to 34, um, from 906 gone to 33.6. But if we look at lasso regression, uh, the weights have gone not, not only shrunk, but they have gone down to zero. And that's really a good feature of lasso regression that, we, that can be used for feature selection. Um, because now when the weights are zero, we can, it tells us that those are unimportant factors. They don't really contribute to uh, predicting our uh, variable uh, over here. Um, ridge, ridge regression does not do that, we just reduce the weight. If we want both lasso and ridge regression, then we can use elastic net uh, regression, uh, wherein we specify both ridge and lasso, and it gives us a nice and good um, combination um, of uh, both of those uh, uh, regressions. Now in Azure ML Studio, so let me go to Azure ML Studio. I use the exact same uh, procedure that I just explained, same data. Um, and let me just walk you through what I did. So I imported the data um, and let's in fact go over here, uh, look at it. So we have, um, I dropped the name column later, but uh, we have all these variables over here. Uh, some of these are categorical, so league, division, and the new league. Um, all of these factors are uh, right skewed, not normally distributed. Um, so that's going to be a problem in general for uh, linear regression, um, and that might explain why linear regression did poorly in, in addition to having multicollinear factors. Um, ridge regression did poorly compared to the tree based methods. Then, uh, uh, if in in that, um, I did not show it here. But if we look back at it, there are some missing values in so NA over here. So salary is what we are trying to predict. 
uh, some of them are NA. So when you import the data in Azure ML Studio, uh, it did not recognize that as uh, a null value. So I'm just getting rid of that with the Python script, um, cleaning the missing data. Then the next one is I am changing the salary to, because we cleaned up the data, it still is a, a string um, feature. So I'm changing that to double uh, or a numerical. Uh, then after that, I exclude the name column. Um, and then these categorical features, uh, before we uh, one hot encode them, um, we have to uh, change it to uh, categorical. That's what I'm doing over here. So these three uh, columns, I'm changing them to uh, categorical. Um, then convert to indicator values. Uh, so from uh, the data transformation, um, I select the three categorical columns that I can that I want to convert to um, one hot and encode them. And I'm gonna uh, drag or select those three um, and then convert them to uh, numbers. Um, I am now in typically when you one hot encode them, you do drop one of the um, columns or categories to avoid multicollinearity. But again, um, if you use ridge or lasso regression or elastic net, that will be taken care of. We don't have to do that. So I'm going to just keep it uh, here. If we look at uh, the coefficients, um, which we just saw, we just saw in the notebook. So compared to salary, uh, again, uh, we have 0 0.6 to 0 0.3. So some of the features are moderate, uh, have moderate correlation, um, but some are not. If we look at the summary of the data, um, so if we look at the summary of the data, it is interesting that if so, let's say, for example, there were some features that had really high max range. So cat add back, for example, our max is um, for 14,053. But if we look at the third quantile, 4,000. So the max is way out there compared to the uh, compared to our third uh, quantile which again indicates that we have really wide range and the data is significantly skewed. Then normalize the data. I'm normalizing everything using z-score transformation um, so as to normalize it and scale it. Then splitting the data into 8020 for test and, uh, for test and um, uh, training set. A stratified column, now this is something I did in scikit-learn. Um, we can set to stratified column to true, um, and then, but in Azure ML Studio, we have to specify only, we can only specify one column. Whereas, um, so what I wanted to do was to keep the same proportion of these categorical variables in, um, uh, in my training and test. Uh, uh, I wanted to stratify, but Azure ML Studio only lets you pick one. So I just skipped as is and just made sure that I have um, good representation in both training and test. And then after that, we just train the model. So first I trained uh, the linear model. So I have my linear model over here. The default weight here is uh, L2 regularization weight is 0 0.001, which if I go back again here, that would be a really small weight um, and that would just be your, this penalty would be 0 0.001. And so we are only left with uh, some of square errors, which is just uh, linear regression, general linear regression. And then I score, train the model on it um, and then score both my training and test and then evaluate the model. Um, and if, I, if we look at the results, 299 and 355, which is very comparable to what we got in uh, scikit-learn. So 300 and 355 uh, for RMSE. Then I changed, initially I tuned it to, I used the same exact same weight in uh, Azure ML Studio. So remember again, if I show, if I go over here, if for rich regression, I use an alpha 402. So I used 402 in, uh, Azure ML Studio and the results were really bad. It was worse than linear regression. So that got me thinking, okay, what could be the reason for that? Um, and then what I thought was, 
I know this, I use uh, Azure ML Studio and uh, Power BI quite a bit. So I know this, that uh, Azure ML team, they use uh, a different library or they have their own library or package that they use for modeling uh, machine learning algorithms. It's called Nimbus ML. So I went to Nimbus ML um, and then used uh, their equivalent of linear regression uh, in Nimbus ML is fast linear regressor. So I created the fast linear regressor in uh, and then used the same uh, training uh, method and same data and then tuned the parameter in fast linear regressor and I got an optimal value of between 0 0.04 to 0 0.06. I use that over here and so 0 0.05 and then if we look at the results um, it dropped from 3, it was 350, 360 or so, so to 345. Um, and then your our train, just like what we saw in scikit-learn, went from uh, 299 to 302, so just a small bump, uh, but the RMSC went from 360, 365 something to 345. So not a significant drop, uh, but still shows you that you can do that. So I guess the main takeaway uh, from, from this is if you have to use the penalized version of regression in Azure ML Studio, one, you can do that by specifying the L2 uh, weight. Um, it does not, Azure ML Studio does not support lasso or elastic knit. Um, you can only do regularized or you can only use the L2 penalty. Um, if you tune your parameters in scikit-learn, uh, most likely they won't work in Azure ML Studio. You'll have to uh, do it outside of this. Another downside here is if we go to, uh, so if I go for example the, the decision tree, yeah, let's go to decision tree, and you have single parameter and then parameter range. So we can specify a range of parameters to try and then we can cross validate the results or cross validate it in a, uh, well, for all those parameters <clears throat> to find, uh, to, to tune the hyperparameters. But for linear regression, if we look at over here, there is no way to specify, um, there is no way to specify the uh, range of L2 weights. So even if I choose online gradient descent, it won't let us do that. Um, for L2 weight, we can only specify one. So there is no way to uh, do a, a parameter sweep or grid search uh, for that way. You have to do it um, for, in a notebook or you know somewhere or, or or you'll have to just create a tree with different nodes in it and try different values now in this case uh, i just wanted to demonstrate so this is not really a good example of um, how to tune tune the parameters like i said you have to cross validate all the results um, and do it um, but uh, just wanted to show how you can do it and how it would be helpful the, the good thing about uh, azure using ridge regression is that even if you have collinear features, you 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 can get away with getting better results and not have to worry about um, the multi-collinearity. And also, as I said, just keep in mind that if you have to do this, uh, tune your parameters outside of Azure ML Studio, and then um, it should just work. Thank you.